Section 1.4, Units of Measurement. So a lot of what we're going to be talking about matter as we go through the year has to have something to do with an amount. So, so in order to do an amount, there needs to be either counting something or measuring something. And in either case, you're going to need units to measure them in. So a measured quantity has to have both a number and a unit. And in science, we use uh, units of the metric system. Uh, so metric is based upon, metric just means measure. So it's just kind of an international system, I think 18, 18th century. And it just makes everything easier because if you were to say a yard is whatever the distance from the nose of the king to his third finger reached out arm or whatever, or a foot is equal to a foot, well, everybody's foot is different. So you have... It's hard, to, it's hard to have a standard. The metric system is based on 10. Everything is divided by 10 or multiplied by 10 or some multiple of 10. And so it, it just makes things very simple. And it's, an, it's a much easier system than, you know, how many pecks are in a fortnight. Who knows? So in science, though, we have something specifically called SI units. And SI is a a French word for international system. They have their letters backwards. It just means everybody that is going to write a scientific paper that's going to be read by others ha have agreed that they're going to use only seven base units. And these are the seven units. You have the, for mass, uh, you have the kilogram. Now, the kilogram, I don't know, weighs about, I don't know, a big a big apple would weigh would weigh a kilogram something a little bit hefty but small length is the meter time is the second temperature is the kelvin now the in the metric system unit of of um, temperature is celsius uh, but kelvin we'll talk about kelvin in a second is what we agree to the amount of the substance was called a mole that's a very um, big big number Electric current is called the amp or the ampere, and the luminous quality is called the candela. So we will uh, spend lots of time this year on mass, length, time, and temperature, and amount of substance. Uh, in physics, you do a lot of work with amps, uh, but you do that at the end of this year too. We're gonna look. We're gonna be able to make batteries and things like that. I have to mention that uh, we in the United States do not use the metric system and the SI units are based in the metric system. So a lot of times we have to make conversions in our head. So we wouldn't think in meters. We wouldn't think in kilometers. Uh, every other country, they, they know what a kilometer per hour feels like in their car. They know how fast that is, but we don't. Um, a kilogram, they, everybody measures their weight in kilos, kilograms. Uh, we would, we're the only country in the world that still uses pounds. It's, a, it's called the British system. The British don't even use the British system. They've all gone to the metric system 40 years ago. In fact, I think there was a, a law that everything had to be trans, transferred in the United States by 1960. And I guess we just never, we, we're all lawbreakers. The kilogram is about 2.2 2 pounds. So you just take your weight, double it at a little bit more, and that would be your, your kilogram weight. A meter is a little over a yard. So a yard is three feet. So a meter, I think it's like 39 inches rather than 36 inches, something like that. So you'll ha we'll have to make conversions uh, so that it makes sense to you uh, what a centimeter is or how much a milliliter is or something like that. So in the metric system, everything is based on 10. So because everything is based on 10, you're going to need prefixes for each of those units of 10. So if you go up from a, from a unit, um, up, say, 1,000, from a gram to a kilogram, kilo means 1,000, so it just means it's a unit that's, that is 1,000 times another unit like them so you can have a kilometer you can have a kilogram or you can have a kiloliter so kilo is a thousand 
mega is a million. Uh, a lot of these very large ones you'll know if you have computers because the amount of bytes of information um, you have to use units of 10. So mega is a million, gig is a billion, tetra is a trillion, peta is a quintillion, I think is what you would call it. If you're going down, deci, like a decimal, is a tenth. So one-tenth of a gram or a meter or, or whatever, a liter. A uh, centi is a hundred. So a centimeter is a hundredth of a meter. Milli is a thousand. So a thousandth of a meter. And then you come down to a billionth or a millionth is micro. And micro is a mu. Uh, so it looks like kind of a italics U, but that's a letter M in Greek. Nano is a billionth. So nano level, something small enough to be on the nano level, it can fit inside a cell. So there's all kinds of technology now in chemistry and physics of doing work that can be on the nano level. Um, lots of it. Pico, trillionth, femto, um, quintillionth, I guess. And then you even have small, smaller ones, atto and zepto. So these are all prefixes and you need to kind of be able to go from one to another. Temperature is the measure of the hotness or coldness of an object, and so it, it has to do with energy. So it's a physical property that determines which direction heat is flowing. So it's actually a kind of a weird conception. Something hot is only hot because energy is going to flow from that object to something around it. So if you put something hot next to something hotter, Whatever used to be hot is now cold, and the heat would go from the hotter object to the colder object. So, um, in the Fahrenheit scale, see, we still use the British system. The Fahrenheit scale, water freezes at 32 degrees Fahrenheit, and water boils at 212 degrees Fahrenheit. So, you know, you have 180 degrees between the freezing of water and the boiling water. Celsius was was designed around water. So it's so zero is the mark that they made the freezing point of water and a hundred degrees Celsius is the mark they made the boiling point of water. So that means there's only a hundred degrees between freezing and boiling. For that reason a Fahrenheit scale is a smaller degree. You, you To go up at one Fahrenheit scale is a little bit smaller than going up a Celsius scale. Going up a Celsius scale it only takes 100 levels to go up to boiling. To Fahrenheit, it would take 180 to, to get up to boiling. So there's a difference there, and you would need a conversion factor in order to, to be able to solve that. Kelvin remembers the SI unit, and Kelvin um, is the same width as a Celsius scale, it's just you're going to go down further. So you can have something under, you can have a negative number in Celsius. So for instance, you can have three degrees below zero or a 50 degrees below zero or 150 degrees below zero in Celsius. The concept of Kelvin is that eventually, as the energy is reduced and the energy is reduced and the energy is reduced, then you're going to, all molecular motion will eventually stop. See, even the jiggles of the molecules as, as they have energy will stop. And that idea of complete stop of energy is called absolute zero. An absolute zero is 273.15 degrees below the freezing point of water. So we call zero, there's no such thing as negative Kelvin. There's zero Kelvin and that's all. So Kelvin is an absolute scale. It just starts at zero and then goes only up. Uh, Celsius is kind of a variable scale. You can have negatives and positives. So if you want to go get a Kelvin scale, if you want to get a Kelvin, you simply take Celsius and, um, and add 273 degrees. If you, have a, if you have a Kelvin scale and you want Celsius, you subtract 273 degrees. So you, have to, you just have to remember the freezing point of water is very warm. So how warm is it? 273 degrees Kelvin. So that's what you just remember. You're adding 273 to Celsius in order to get Kelvin. You're subtracting 
273 from Kelvin to get Celsius. So we'll we'll look at that in just a second. So in order to change Fahrenheit to Celsius, you have to do a formula. If you remember that Fahrenheit, the water boils at 212, at Celsius it boils at 100. So in my mind, I need to get the number to be bigger. The Celsius, whatever the Celsius is, I need to get bigger if I'm going to represent it as a Fahrenheit. So you're going to, there will be two uh, ratios that you're going to multiply with. You're either going to multiply something by 5 over 9, or you're going to multiply something by 9 over 5. Now, which one is bigger than 1? 5 divided by 9, that's, a, that's less than 1. 9 over 5 is more than 1. So if I want to go from little to big, Celsius to Fahrenheit, I need to multiply by 9 over 5. So let's just take the boiling point of water. You know that it's 212 and 100. So let's go from 100 Celsius, and I'm going to multiply that by 9 over 5, and I get 180. Well, I need to get from 180 to 212 because I know that water boils at 212. So at the very end, I'm going to add 32 degrees. So 100 degrees boiling times 9 fifths is the, that's how you get from 100 to 180. Because it's, remember, there's a 100 degrees difference between 0 and, and 0 and 100. And then there's a 180 difference between boiling and freezing in Fahrenheit. That's 9 fifths. To go from 100 to 180 would be 9 fifths. So you're going to multiply and then add 32. So you would end up getting 212. So let's go backwards. Let's go from Fahrenheit to Celsius. So I want to go smaller. So to go smaller, say so if I have 212, the first thing I need to do is get it back to 180. Because it's 180, the 5 ninths or the 9 fifths takes 180 to 100 or 100 to 180. So I need to go from 212 back to 180, the difference in, in boiling to freezing. So it's 212 minus 32, and now you end up with 180. And once you have that, you're going to multiply by the ratio, but that ratio has to be the small one, and so it's going to be 5 over 9, and you end up getting 100. So you should be able to go back and forth um, in that. So next we want to talk about derived units. A derived unit is anything that's formed from the seven base units. So if, for instance, I'm going um, 20 miles per hour, well, let's do it in, in metric. So let's say I'm going uh, 20 meters uh, per second. A meter is a distance, and a, t and a second is a time. And if you're doing any math, in this case, that line it says divided by. One meter divided by one second is a rate of speed. So anything that's going to involve more than one of the seven units is a derived unit. So if there's math involved, you know, multiplication or something like that, division, um, you're going to, it's called deriving, uh, deriving it. So um, let's look at this case. We've got the first of the derived units is volume. So volume is is the inside of a box. It's the inside of a of a of a box made by by distance. So you have a box that is a certain distance times a certain distance times a certain distance. Then whatever's contained in that box is a volume. So a volume is a is something to the third power. So you would say whatever your unit of length is, unit of length would be let's say meters, and if you have a square cubic meter, suddenly now you're talking about volume. So that's derived. Um, the one that you we're going to use a lot is the liter um, and the milliliter. The milliliter is um, in nursing is called a cc, cubic centimeter. So if a nurse gives you so many cc's of a medicine, uh, what they're doing is they're saying so many milliliters. It's just short form. It may be easier to say or faster or whatever. So if you take a centimeter times a centimeter times a centimeter, that's a cubic centimeter. That's defined to be one milliliter. So that means 
um, a thousand of these, a thousand milliliters would equal one liter because milli means thousandths. So a thousand of them would equal a liter. Well, a thousand of them is called a deciliter. So a deciliter would be 10 millimeters on a side and then you make a, a, a cube with uh, 10 millimeters, 10 cubic centimeters on a side and that's a, that's a, a liter. Uh, you even pop and at the store comes in uh, two liter bottles. I think that was the only thing they ever changed before they ignored the 1960 law. Also remember that since um, volume is a derived unit, the liter isn't an SI unit because the SI unit are those just those seven common um, single units. Anything derived from those, um, like liters, are derived from the others. So you would have to say like a cubic deciliter if you were writing a paper. The final derived unit we'll talk about today is density. And density is defined to be the mass, which would be in kilograms, divided by volume. And volume, remember, would be some kind of cubic distance. So like liters or so you could say grams per milliliter would be density. And density is just talking about how much stuff you have in a certain amount of space. So we find that the density of water is one gram per milliliter. And that was the definition of the gram. So a gram is simply defined to be the amount of water the weight of the water in one cubic centimeter of that water. We call that a gram, and then a thousand of those would be a kilogram. So water is used as a, as a standardizer um, a lot as chemistry was developing. They, water, everybody has it, everybody can get to it. It's very useful, and so it's also very good because lots and lots of solutions will be just made up of water, and now I know if I know how much water I have, I know how heavy it is. And that's an awesome um, conversion. So here you have different densities just showing you that, that you can cram more matter in a space, you have a higher density. So air has a you know, 0 0.001 grams per cubic centimeter. That's the same as a milliliter. Uh, but gold has 19 grams, 19.32 grams uh, for every milliliter of gold. So, it, so gold would be heavy for its size. Uh, water uh, is middle, air would be very light for its size. So the idea of light and heavy has to do with density.